the purpose of the press conference is to uh, uh, lay out uh, in further detail where the administration is coming from with regard to the President's stimulus package and our take with regard to South Carolina and what we think we ought to be doing with a significant portion of those uh, stimulus dollars is contemplated in the bill. Um, if you cut to the chase, the, the simple message from our end is that we don't think it's a good idea to spend money that you, you don't have. We don't think it's a good idea to spend money that you don't have at a personal level. We don't think it's a good idea to spend money that you don't have at a state government level or, for that matter, a federal level. And that fundamentally, if you boil down what the stimulus would mean for South Carolina, it means we would go through the process of spending a bunch of money that we don't have and there would be a price to be paid 24 months from now when those funds dry up. A very significant price, totaling $1.2 billion in South Carolina because we would dig for ourselves a $1.2 billion annualization hole going forward. And the question at that point, though I wouldn't be here to answer it, would be how exactly do we fill that hole in? Do we raise taxes? Do we significantly cut benefits? Uh, what, what do we do? And so what, what we've done is to say we think that that's a mistake. On the portion of the monies that we control, which is about 25% the, 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 the total, what we've, uh, we're going to do, and the letter will go out later this afternoon, to the Obama administration laying out both our concerns and a request for a waiver that would allow us to take that money and allocate it to paying down uh, South Carolina debt that's accrued over the years. We think that that would be a better use of the money for the stronger financial footing it would put our state in in what are the most uncertain of economic times. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, the Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan, just said that about your decision. I think the kids of South Carolina are hurting. I don't understand why an adult would do anything to jeopardize kids' education. It's unfathomable. So I have two questions. One, first, sir. Are you concerned about the well-being of the students here, and why not accept education funding that could help them? Uh, it's okay for us to argue the merits to merits of the bill. Uh, tell them to come on down to South Carolina and spend some time in schools as I have, uh, because I think that the people of South Carolina care about education in South Carolina. I think that policymakers, Republican and Democrat alike, care about uh, education in South Carolina. Uh, as one twice elected to the governorship and three times elected to the United States Congress, uh, I care passionately about education because I think it's one of the absolute linchpins to a young person's ability to compete in the 21st century with the other six and a half billion people who make up planet Earth. Um, so to question one's motives, I, I, I think, begs the larger question of the merits or demerits of the stimulus package itself, which is not what he's talking about here. There is a double-edged sword for every young school-aged child in this state, or for that matter, America, in going out and spending money that you don't have. And so I think the notion of fiscal restraint, of saying, you know, of, of course we would like to spend unlimited amounts of money on education, or for that matter, health care, or for that matter, law enforcement and other things, but you've got to do it within the confines of that which is sustainable. And so the idea of digging a $1.2 billion hole whose cost ultimately will be borne by those very school-aged kids to me is not in their best interest. Governor, you've been accused of posturing uh, by making this stand. I mean, how do you respond to that? It, it does seem to be a, a, a very good political move, and I know you uh, take out with the description of those actions. Sure, sure. But you get to do something here with the stimulus that really washes your hands in making a decision on that money. Uh, with all due respect, a couple different thoughts. One, um, and I wrote this in the bottom of the letter that I sent to state legislators, uh, I guess, was that letter yesterday or the day before? Yesterday. Um, for a lot of different reasons, I, I would rather skip on this one. Uh, uh, you know, chief among them, in other words, I'm not going to be the one who has to deal with the annualization hole that exists. It comes in 24 months, and I'm done in 18 months. Um, so, in, in a lot of ways, uh, it would be far easier not to deal with this. Uh, folks are constantly in the business of assigning motives. I get that. It'd be far easier not to deal with that. 
But, you know, I've got a 15-year pattern of doing exactly this kind of thing. I mean, you can go back to my freshman days in the United States Congress, and I was taking the same kind of stance with regard to fiscal issues. So I would agree with you, John, you know, that it might be posturing if it was something new. But if you've got a 15-year history of doing exactly the kind of thing, maybe it's just sort of in the DNA and tied to what I'm hearing from the people that I represent and the people uh, across the state of South Carolina.